Okay, hello there. This is Marika from Athens. Thank you for the opportunity to convey uh, an idea of what's happening here. And uh, I would like, I shall try to give you a very short summary in the, in uh, five minutes. Um, and uh, I must say things are so bad that you can actually do it in five minutes. You don't have to say a lot. So, uh, although I'm an economist, I would like to start from the political situation and especially the um, complete uh, writing off of democracy. What is, what is happening in Greece reminds people of political systems that have uh, not existed in Europe for centuries. We have a political system now, we're being governed by a government that was not elected, that was appointed, and the Greek parliament has no majority party in it. The, uh, right now, there is no, no political party that can be uh, considered responsible for the policies applied. So, not only do we have an appointed government, but we also have no parliamentary majority to take responsibility. This happened, this is as of last uh, Sunday, and the latest vote on these austerity measures. So, what happened last Sunday was that both the big parties had um, uh, about, about uh, a fourth of their members members of parliament did not vote the party line. The party line of both the, bi the big political parties, New Democracy and PASOK, the Socialists, was for the austerity measures. And uh, about a fourth of each party of the members in parliament did not vote. So they were uh, uh, placed outside the party. That was the threat issued by the leadership of, of each party, that if you don't vote, uh, the party line, consider yourself thrown out. And this is what happened. So today we have this very uh, strange, dangerous situation where you have a parliament that has no majority and you have a government that's not elected. And of course a prime minister that's not elected. So on the uh, question of democracy, uh, it is uh, what is happening is, as I say, unheard of. It is contrary to any idea of democracy, at least the way we know what it means in Europe. And this is not just sad, this is dangerous. Um, I would also like to add the, the rise of populism in the appointed government. Uh, there was uh, a third participant, apart from the two big parties, there was a third participant, a very small extreme uh, right-wing party. Now, these guys... Um, resigned from the government because they say that the government is not doing the right things. Can you imagine the extremely extreme right wing uh, blaming the government for not doing enough and resigning from it, the appointed government. So this is, this is a, the political mess and uh, uh, autarky we are in right now. That's on the political side. On the social side, uh, there is uh, fear. There's fear. People are afraid. Because every day in the news, and almost throughout the day, you hear about new measures, new cuts uh, from all the kind of expenses, public expenditure, that the government considers, considers it easiest to put its hands on. So, again, they, they're talking of cutting pensions. They cut the pensions in 2010. That was the first, uh, um, the cut. In, in the process of the austerity uh, in Greece. So they reduced uh, pensions by about 15% in 2010. They increased taxation on pensions, on the lowest pensions and, and on all pensions in 2011. And in 2012, they're saying they're going to reduce pensions again. Uh, so pensions are a big thing. The other thing is, of course, the minimum wage is being reduced. The minimum wage was uh, just under 700, that's gross, uh, and it's come down to just under 500, gross again. And uh, this hits, is hitting against the uh, private sector. 
they've also introduced uh, a 22% cut across the board in uh, wages of the private sector. So we have another spate of uh, measures that are putting the Greeks, the Greek households, the Greek people, young and old, uh, they're creating, uh, uh, they're putting them in a very difficult position of trying to survive. In addition to what one hears on TV in the news, and of course all day long there are, uh, the, the TV is playing a role of um, uh, making a sort of, um, uh, putting extra emphasis on the dangers of, uh, of not uh, implementing the austerity measures. The TV and the media are playing a very negative role in creating this kind of uh, social climate of fear. But in addition to what one hears on TV, is there's the uncertainty. The people are, uh, for one thing, people those who have some money deposited in the banks are scared that, okay, there's going to be a default, we're going to lose our money, so they go and take the, the money out of the bank. And I mean, that's the way to, to have a bank run. That's the way to get banks to just disappear. And um, then people go and they buy loads of stuff and put it away, hoard it, because there's going to be a default, and I don't know, it's like the Third World War. So there's a social climate of uncertainty and fear and panic, um, and of course there's a lot of anger. So for one thing, people are trying to survive, and that, that's, that explains the sort of rushing to the supermarket to buy stuff, uh, but also they're expressing their, their anger at the political leadership, there's a growing anti-German feeling over here. Um, there's a growing anti-German feeling, which um, is, is unfortunate because I know lots of Germans. I have a lot of German friends, very close friends, who are, are sending messages of solidarity. I know there have been rallies in Germany in support of the Greek case. So, But unfortunately, in the same way that the beginning of the crisis, there was an anti-Greek climate um, growing in, in Germany, now there's an anti-German climate growing in, in uh, Greece. So what you have is a disintegration of uh, European unity. I wouldn't say the European Union, because the European Union is actually, the, the, the leadership of the European Union is responsible for what's happening. It's their policies that have brought this tremendous state of affairs, which I'm describing the Greek case. I, I think that, you know, one can find many parallels in other uh, countries of the EU, in Spain or Portugal. Greece is an extreme case. So the European leaderships do have uh, uh, do bear the responsibility for what's happening. But right now we have uh, a, a growing feeling of disunity, of things falling apart in, the, in Europe. And this is very, very sad. And this uh, is a sign of more things to come, which go beyond the public debt crisis. Uh, my feeling is that unless this um, uh, very bad turn of events is, is halted at some point, unless there's a turnaround, uh, we're, we're heading down a very dangerous way. Well, I think the first thing, for one thing, let me just say that uh, the uh, German officials um, are not are wrong in what they're saying. They, the austerity measures that were introduced in 2010, even before the bailout, before in, in January 2010, the first bailout was agreed in May 2010. In January 2010, there was an increase in the VAT, in value-added tax, from 19 to 23%. So the austerity measures have been going on for two years now. And the austerity measures have um, reduced the size of the economy. In the past, uh, uh, last year, in 2011, the economy shrank by about 7%. That's production shrank. And in 2010, it, the economy uh, again was reduced by about nearly 4%. So in two years' time, the economy has been reduced in size by 10%. And this is what they want. They, they want the economy to deflate. They want wages and prices to go down. And it's happening. So I take very badly, I take it very badly when I hear that the promises are not being um, kept. Probably, and I assume what uh, Mr. Schäuble and, and the other people say that, what they have in mind is that um, the Greeks have not, the Greek government has not succeeded in selling off the, the uh, state assets at the rate that uh, they agreed in May 2010. When they said you have to sell off, you know, 
to state assets to the amount of 50 billion uh, uh, euro. And right now, I understand this is uh, this is a very high target. I mean, this is. Uh, uh, apart from the fact that, of course, that selling state assets doesn't solve the problem, um, one could argue that this is a, 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 a market, a, it's a buyer's market. You don't sell things when, when things are as bad as, the, as they are right now. So that's uh, my, my answer to the remarks by German officials. Now, whether we should leave the euro or not, I've always been of the uh, opinion that uh, leaving the euro is not a solution. Um, exiting the euro is not a solution. At least within the euro, you are fighting along with other people with the common aim. Because exiting the euro simply means you're going into a kind of competitive um, devaluation process. Okay, so the Greeks get their drachma back and they redevalue it, and the Spanish get the Spaniards get their peseta and and. I'm right, right? It's Peseta. So, and they devalue it, and so on. So, this, this, is, this doesn't get you anywhere. Uh, however, my feeling is that the way things are going, we will have no option. There will be, even this government, this, with, with all its mistakes and the, the, the wrong decisions that have, that have been made, because I, I strongly believe that the government under Yoros Papandreou has uh, a lot to... Uh, they, they should really, they did many things wrong back in 2010. They, they, they handled the whole thing very much, very, very wrongly. But even they, with their kind of neoliberal uh, ideas and uh, sort of uh, pro-German whatever stand, even they won't be able to stay within the euro because we're being pushed out, out of the euro, whether we like it or not. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm against leaving the euro, but, you know, there comes a point when... There's not much you can do. Now, they, the, 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 the Troika, the European Union and so on, don't want elections to take place in Greece. And they say they have demanded that the leaders of the two big political parties, PASOK and New Democracy, submit in writing their um, willingness to carry on with the same policies even after the elections, irrespectively of who wins the elections. And they did it. That was a condition for the new bailout. They actually did it. Both Papandreou and Samaras sent um, letters, signed uh, letters to uh, the European um, Union and so on and the IMF saying that we commit to continue with the same policy. Now, of course, the polls show that there is um, a great uh, turn, a significant preference for left-wing parties. So now, if, uh, in the FT yesterday, there was an article about these dangerous leftists who are not for the bailout because, um, you know, the left-wing parties don't want the bailout. They say this is all very wrong. So, um, you know, th now they want the left-wing parties to say that they will continue with the same policy. And if they don't, they say, well, don't have elections, you know, just carry on the way you are, it's fine. So we have a huge um, issue of democracy. I mean, it's just been buried away over here. If we carry on like this, this is dictatorship.